Hello, everyone. My name is Joe. Uh, today, I'm going to be doing a tech talk on a semi-new feature in Angular uh, called the component method. So what is the component method? Um, it was introduced in Angular 1.5. And it's basically a new syntax for writing directives in Angular. Um, it provides a cleaner and more simpler method uh, to doing like UI components, that which were traditionally use uh, a directive. Um, it also promotes the best practices for directives, and they come default with this component method. Um, the result is a writing web application components in a more uh, Angular 2 type style and React as well. Uh, so some of the newer frameworks are using this, this style. So I think the best way to show it is to take a pre-written directive and kind of refactor it as a component. So what we're dealing with here is a little counter uh, directive, basically an input that has these increment and decrement buttons that changes the value in the input. Uh, HTML, as you would expect, is an element uh, directive. So it takes a count here, which is passed to it from its parent controller. So that controller here, the count controller, uh, would probably be using a service of some sort to get that number. But for example's sake, we're just going to use a uh, four there. And then we have our directive declaration here. Uh, so let's uh, take this step by step and make it into a component. So uh, to start, we'll just create our component definition here. And right off the bat, you'll notice that uh, rather than having a function that returns an object, you just pass through an object literal as the second argument. Uh, a little bit cleaner already. Second, uh, by default, components have an isolate scope. So rather than having to de declare an isolate scope for a particular directive and then pick what you want to bind to the controller, you automatically have that with this bindings um, object. So count, again, was the number that's being put on there through its parent controller. So as we pass it through, it's bound to the controller. Uh, there's no more link function. So there was links and controllers on directives, which had some nuances uh, that were a little bit different. Now we just have the one controller for components. And uh, by default, components use the controller as syntax or style. A little bit about that. Um, it's a popular practice um, for using controllers on directives and basically anything. So Angular controllers are essentially constructor functions or class-like objects. And uh, in order to use a traditional way of using like this on a, on a constructor function, um, we would use a scope variable or the scope object um, that's passed through to there and injected in. Um, this is used to control model and view changes from the controller. Um, rather than doing that, we set up a, a normal constructor function uh, that uses the this keyword and instantiate it as an instance of the controller. Um, this is great. It allows for namespacing in your views. Um, so we'll see how important that is here. Consider the top situation where we're not using the controller as method. It can get a little hairy when you have similar <coughs> properties or methods on the controllers. So you'll see we have three different titles here, and it gets confusing to, to kind of see what's what, uh, as opposed to the bottom situation where we're instantiating the controller or aliasing it as main, as another, and as yet. So you'll see that we have sort of a namespace title. So main.title applies to the title on the main controller, so on and so forth. Uh, this is extremely useful when you're trying to access the parent controller. So here we can use dollar sign parent, uh, which is an Angular thing that lets you access the parent property. And you see we have dollar sign parent, dollar sign parent to go up two levels. Here it's pretty straightforward. You know, main.title always refers to main.title on the main controller. Uh, so it gives you easier access to parent scopes as well. You can, of course, still use the dollar sign scope if you need to. Uh, so you can inject that in like you would with anything in Angular and still use it if you want to do something like a scope.watch, scope.broadcast, scope.on. So you don't lose that, um, but you would need to add it in to your controller. So that's a controller as method, and that's by default with a, a component. So, so far we're looking at this with our refactoring. Uh, directive on the left, control on the right. Already looks a little bit cleaner. Now let's add in our template. Um, so you can use a template URL over an inline template. Uh, this is using an inline template with a template string here. And we have our to-do uh, template here. And uh, you access 
the controller or the methods on the controller by using this dollar sign CTRL. So by default, we're using that controller as. Uh, you can name it whatever you want if you redeclare it with controller as controller or anything you'd like. By default, you're going to get the properties and methods by using this dollar sign CTRL. So there you have it. We refactored our counter directive into a counter component you see side by side. The component looks a little cleaner. Um, I think it looks a little more elegant and it's just uh, easier to build because there's less things you have to declare. So another example comes from my uh, Stackathon project. Basically, this is a single movie view. Um, I used a component structure for this. So here's some of the code behind it. Um, we're building a component on the main app called movie. This is the movie component. Uh, we're binding data to it. So we're passing things down from a parent controller into this stateless component. Uh, we're using a template URL. So on the right, we have the template. Again, notice we used a dollar sign control. You don't even need to pass through anything regarding a controller. If you don't, it's considered a stateless controller. I'll get into that in a little bit. But essentially, uh, by default, it's going to give you that dollar sign CTRL. So I'm accessing all the properties on there um, through this simple component here. Um, so one important part to note is uh, when you're using states or you want to use a resolve onto something like this, uh, Angular UI router, which is what I use, uh, supports this. So you'll notice here, um, for this state, which is movie, we declare a URL, movie, and then we pass through an ID after that. The template here is actually the movie component, or you can think of it like a an element directive. So by using this just move, movie custom HTML element, that'll automatically go and find the component for it and find its template URL. So it's pretty powerful there just to keep things clean and figure out the flow of data and where things are going. And then a normal resolve on this state uh, for a movie is going to return a promise from our movie service find movie by ID using the ID that was on that state URL. Um, and then by using dollar sign resolve, you resolve that promise right there in the directive, in the component, uh, and we pass it through, which results in this. Um, so yeah, we pass through that data. Anything we pass through that we resolve with that ID will change the poster we have here, this image, the title, the uh, date, streaming services, all the information that we're, we're using there. So it makes things more flexible and reusable. So I really, uh, I really promote this component method. I think it's, it's great, and it mirrors a lot of the more popular frameworks out there, like Angular 2 and React. Um, so I urge you to use components to make parts of your application more modular, and then piece those components together with the larger full application. Uh, and again, components enforce the best practices of directives while making it cleaner and more simple to declare. Um, so yeah, this is a, a look at a completely component-based Angular app. This might be one file structure that you could use. You'll notice that the index.html sits outside of the app folder, and inside of there, it's really all components, views for those components, and then services. Uh, we separate them into stateless components and stateful components. There's a few different names for that. They're called presentation components and um, uh, container components. So the difference between those stateless components are basically kind of dumb. They don't know what's going on with the state, or they can't manipulate anything in the model, or anything really with the database. They basically just get data in from a parent control controller, which is one of those uh, stateful com controllers. Uh, so the stateful controllers talk to the services, and they, they resolve data from resolves, or they pass through information, uh, and they connect with, with the services, and then pass that data into the state list controllers, uh, state list components, I'm sorry. And yeah, so you could reuse these stateless components in tons of different places. Um, and it makes it really powerful and makes your, your code reusable for sure. Uh, so when you build an app, anytime you notice that uh, something is being reused more than once in your app, go ahead and take it out and make it a component and just pass through any data that you need to, to fit that spot, that context. Um, no more getting lost in scope soup, as it's called, the dollar sign scope. So that's all I have. Uh, I definitely urge you guys to give it a shot. Uh, do some research. There's some links here from uh, examples and tutorials on how to use this. But it's made making Angular apps more fun for me and definitely makes my code look nicer and more, more reusable. So thank you. <laughs>